Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Droid Life Show today, episode 254. It is Wednesday, not Friday, May 19th. Uh, I'm your host, Kellen. With me, Tim. Tim, say hi. Hey, guys. What's up? Tim here, back again. I know it's been a while. Apologies. That's my bad. <laughs> good to good to see everyone. It's been, uh, it's, you know, I, I just get to be straight here. Um, Android News has been dead the last month or so i know we haven't been on and look we've had some stuff going on i think i took some days tim taking some days it's just stuff going on but there's been absolutely like we've been waiting for this week basically for a while and it's google io week so there's a lot to talk about but you know google hasn't really wanted to announce much samsung no but no phones are coming nothing's been happening it's been it's been a struggle to stay busy let's just say that <laughs> yeah. so i apologize for not coming on the air for a really long time uh but there's just you know some sometimes we go through where android news is it's just not there and it has not been anyway we're back <laughs> it's good to be back uh so kind of a special show because uh well we have uh google io this week if, in fact it's still going on at this moment i, I believe stay it tuned is. There are three days, I think, of of the uh, the virtual I.O., free to attend for anyone. Uh, day one was yesterday. Day one's always the big day, right? It's the day they Google announces everything. So that happened yesterday. We figured we should talk about it all today. And then, uh, well, I don't know. That's kind of it. Uh, today is more just like sessions and stuff for developers to learn how to make cool stuff, which is like way above the head here. Nerd beyond, stuff. Wherever, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you're watching us live, uh, just say hi just so that we know everything is working properly because it's been so long. Like I have no idea how to even start a podcast anymore. So say hi if you, if you could just to make sure. Um, so anyways, uh, DL show on a Wednesday – and uh, I, I do have some sad news, but um, no, no trivia for the show. We're Gosh. just talking IO. I know, I know. We, like, we we take a month and a half off or something. Come back. We don't even do trivia. We don't even yeah. like. You know, we'll have to do uh, something. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I used to say like we'll make up for it. So we'll, yeah, we'll try to make up for it again. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're just talking IO today. So thank you if you're still with us and you plan to hang out even with no trivia. So. Uh, Google I.O. yesterday, keynote. I think it was live. It was live, right? This wasn't like a pre recorded Apple at their spaceship event. This was like Google on campus. The sun was shining. Sundar was there. It was I nice. believe it was live. I, I don't think it was pre recorded. There may have been some parts that were, but I think a lot of it was not. Anyway. If, uh, if that Michael Pena skit was pre recorded, they should have gone and done it again because it was that, rough. That I believe was pre-recorded, and it was still rough. Oh, Jesus! That one did not seem. Love. That one seemed very much so. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, keynote day one. We, we actually let me back up one day. I think the day before, okay. I, I you know I I wrote a little bit and said you know Google I/O is coming. I hate to make predictions because I'm always wrong. Not always, but oftentimes the opposite happens of what I suggest may happen. You know, like HTC having big years and things like that. So I said, and I always try to hesitate because I hate to spoil and ruin everything. But I said, this feels like a big IO. It feels like Android 12 is going to be big and they're going to show off some stuff. We think Wear OS might get some love for the first time in, you know, seven years. Those two things actually happened, Tim. They actually. That's true. It actually happened. So uh, not taking credit, just saying for once, because I know you guys hold this against me, for once, the opposite did not happen. So um, we got a lot. Android 12 was announced. Now, look, we've been testing developer previews, but we got the first beta yesterday. And on top of that, Google showed off, well, Matthias, I should say. Matthias mm. Duarte returned. He And the outfit did not disappoint either, by the way. No. And and Matthias returned to talk about the next design language from Google called Material U. The name is whatever, but it's sus. Yeah. <laughs> but. 
but we have a new design language and it will take over Android first and starting with Pixel. And then, you know, they'll flow it out to watches. They showed it on maybe some tablets. I don't know whose tablet is ever going to get this, but I think they even showed it on smart displays and that sort of thing. So, and there, Tim has it up, part, parts of it up and running. Parts. Yeah. So we have a new design language, um, Android 12 and a new design language. So that, that happened. Um, then we kind of went from there. In fact, it actually went to the material use stuff and that kind of pushed us into, well, this isn't just for phones. And then we brought up Wear OS, which I think might just be called Wear. And there was huge news there because Google said, look, we've been partnering with Samsung and we're changing the game. Or they didn't say that. That's really cheesy. But they said, (laughs) this is a big deal. And we went, oh my God. And then Fitbit got brought up and there's a lot going on there. And then there's just other stuff because it's IO. They talked about Google Photos and a bunch of stuff. Uh, new password and Chrome stuff and digital car keys and Android TV stuff and Google Maps stuff. And there's, you know, it was IO. So they did a lot. But the big two things are Android 12 beta and Material U. And then we'll get into the Wear stuff. Um, I don't think it's going to just be Kellen's 30 seconds of smartwatch talk. I think it's bigger than that, I think. I might even be able to add like 10 seconds of commentary if you'd like. Okay, I was going to say, I feel like you are even excited about this, which says something because it's yeah. been a while for you for for watches. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay. Android 12. Let's start there. Let's start there. Right. Okay. Android 12. So Tim and I have uh, have uh, Android 12 beta up and running on some Pixel 5s. Or no, you're just a Pixel 4. What, what is that? Pixel 5. Okay. Um, so we have Pixel 5s up and running. We have uh, We have the 12 beta. So it's available if you have a Pixel 5, any of the 4As, any of the 3s, any of the 3As. You could just jump on this thing right now. And because it's beta, you could just go on the Android beta site and sign up. You don't have to ADB. You don't have to hack it up and do whatever. You could just go on and enroll, and then an update will show up. So if you want to test it, feel free. And because we're at beta, I kind of feel safe suggesting that you're okay running this. You know, Google wouldn't Mm -hmm. push it to beta if they if this was developer only, like they want you to mess with it at this point in time. Yeah. So, uh, let's see what's new. There's not a lot new. (laughs) This is, this is where it kind of gets weird. I just said how big of a deal this was. The big stuff is kind of in the redesign. Now Google, I believe called this like the biggest redesign since 2014 or something like that. So in seven years, they're saying this is the big, what was in 2014? Was that Kit Kat? What was that? Uh, gosh, I don't know right off. Which I should know. I I don't. 2004. Anyway, 2004. So seven years ago. They're saying this is the biggest redesign. And if you look at any of the material website where they have this whole dedicated material use section, it certainly seems like one of the biggest ones we've had. So um, big clock you can see on here is a big deal, of course. But They've changed a lot. So like if I swipe down into the notification area, you can see a whole redesign up here. We've got fatter sliders and there's supposed to be fancier animations and more thoughtful animations. Like when you when you hit the power button and this doesn't actually work yet, it's supposed to light up. Oh, it did actually work. It did, work. yeah. I swear I looked at this yesterday and when I hit the power button, it lit up from the bottom. So anyway, that's working. But like, depending on where you like light up your phone, it'll light up from there. Yours, see, see, yours didn't work, I don't think, did it? I don't think so. I feel like yours is coming from the bottom and mine is totally coming from the side. Well, it did. Well, yeah, it, it, Look at it, that. Sometimes mine, it does. Sometimes it works. <laughs> Anyway, so like things like that, Um, but they also announced new widgets. So a whole new style of widgets that will show up and they'll be a big part of it, which is a big deal, right? Because Apple just brought widgets finally and Apple's widgets look really nice. So Google kind of needed to do that. You know, I was looking through widgets on the phone to see if anybody had a new widget and no one does. No widgets. Um, and, And most of the widgets really do look like they haven't been updated probably since about 2014. Uh, like Spotify's widget. I don't know if you looked at that thing lately. I, I think that's like a well, Gen they, One widget. Like they, it's bad. They killed the widget and then they brought the widget back, right? Like because right. people without without changing it, right? About yeah. a widget, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so the so the big things are UI, uh, this material U, new widgets, a redesign of just a whole bunch of stuff. But Google said it's beyond that. They've 
They've done a whole bunch of behind the scenes stuff to improve performance and made animations more thoughtful and meaningful, whatever the hell that means. They, they were, they were very into this update um, as far as a redesign goes. So we've been playing with some of it for a while, but they're really starting to show it now in this first beta. Now that said, this is only kind of the beginning of what we're going to see. The pixel experience is going to be that custom experience where when you set a wallpaper, all of your apps take on sort of a system color that's pulled from your wallpaper so that in the calculator, in the calendar, in your phone app, in your messages app, in your settings, all of that has this similar sort of color and style. And that we believe is probably going to be a pixel feature drop thing that they launch with Android 12, probably in August. And that'll be exclusive to pixel, but they're kind of showing off. This is sort of the idea we can go like forward with. So pixels will have a bit of an exclusive thing there and it's going to be so hot. Like when you just set a wallpaper and it just changes the color of all of your apps, it's going to be the coolest damn thing ever. And you'll be able to manually pick that color too and things like that. But what they'll try to do is automatically adjust these things. It, sh it should be very fun. Um, Tim noticed this really weird new ripple sort of trans or effect when you punch on buttons and stuff. It's like oh, sparkly, yeah. glimmery. It's, terrible. I don't know. it's very odd. I don't know where the hell that came from, but it's there. Um, they're going to change it so that the power button can um, actually act as your Google Assistant launch. I don't, I don't know why I need that. You can talk to your phone or swipe up. There's like numerous ways to get to the Assistant, but that's going to happen. The uh, the back double tap gesture that we're expecting um, actually has an official sort of animation now in the gesture system, but it doesn't work. It's still, it's still broken. Um, these are just all some new things that are that are still in there. Um, Google announced that scrolling screenshots are actually coming. They, they still don't work. I feel like we've been tracking this for about three Android releases now. Um, they don't work, but they did name drop them. There's a whole bunch of privacy changes coming, like an actual privacy dashboard, which will not show up. And they've actually announced this won't show up until beta two. So if you go looking for that, you won't find it yet. The privacy dashboard just going to show you uh, sort of a snapshot of what's going on in uh, with permissions and things like that for your phone. And you can quickly remove permissions and things like that from from apps and whatnot. Um, location permissions. They're going to do this thing now where if something asks for you to use your location, you can say to give it a precise location or sort of a. Um, an approximate location. So it's not like pinpoint where exactly you are. That's coming. Um, so yeah, there, there are some big stuff. It's just not all quite here yet, but what they have given us is again, this sort of taste of where the material you language is going. And look, Google really is talking about this as the biggest Android update in a really long time. And it, it kind of feels like it is at least as far as UI goes. I think once we get to stable release on pixel phones, we're going to go this is really cool and pretty and good job, Google. I think that's what we're going to say in, in like August when they do the like, sure. it's official, it's stable. Here's a pixel feature drop. I think it's, we're going to go, yeah, this is, this is maybe reason to buy a pixel phone. Maybe it, it'll be, it'll be nice to see it on pixel devices, of course, but we have to remember that the majority of Android users are definitely not using pixel devices. So I'm interested Interested to see in the future what uh, what features these other companies can maybe bring over that Google will allow them, you know, to sort of make available to the the open source and allow other companies to incorporate. I mean, that theme engine based on the wallpaper is just so cool. Like, I feel like that should just be an Android thing. It just se it seems really nice to me. Um, now I understand that. Uh, you know, be together, not the same is like, you know, their kind of motto or their slogan or whatever, but then they don't really like, I feel they don't practice what they preach sometimes, you know, like, and I get it. We want to make pixel phones cool and unique and want people to buy them. But like people just don't buy pixel phones. Like, I mean, the majority of people. So, so far we've used Android 12 beta for exactly one day now yeah, one and day. you know, so far, so good. There, you know, I'm really disappointed actually that there's a lot of stuff that they showed off on the screen, yeah. uh, but I don't get to use yet. <laughs> like that kind of pisses me off. But like, there's lots of other cool stuff. Like overall, it looks fine. It, it feels fine. I've seen a lot of people talking about, hey, should I flash it? I know it's a beta. 
so far, super stable. I actually haven't tried to use Google Pay or anything yet, but all of my apps seem great. I've only you know, I've come across like a bug or two where something like an app kind of sticks open or something like a, a yeah. when you're using the smart home controls from your <clears throat> shortcut kind of menu, if you tap on those, a UI kind of thing will kind of stick like a flag. But other than that, smooth, smooth performance. Now also let me uh, just clarify i'm coming from a, a galaxy s21 ultra you know greatest smartphone of all time great performance beautiful display and so the and the pixel 5 man just does not compete with the galaxy s21 ultra i mean no. the dis, this display is so dim like i'm cranking it up all the it way is. and it's just like not even 50 percent of what my, the galaxy s21 right. is capable of so it's so small it's small, which is nice. It's very compact, but that that means the speakers are crap. And I don't want to sit here and turn this into like a Pixel Five bash session. I'm just hoping and praying that the Pixel Six and the Pixel Six Pro slash Ultra Two Thousand is a really good high end device, man. I'm I'm hoping, praying. Yeah, you kind of have been on the ultimate of Android, and now you're falling back. Like I've been on the Pixel Five since well, since I reviewed the One Plus Nine, whatever. Sure. And I just immediately went back to this. And so I'm used to the uh, subpar experience. Uh, I, yeah. You know. And the performance stutters. Like, uh, well, and I know it's not Android 12 because it was stuttering <laughs> on Android 11. So it's this 90 hertz. It's not even 90. Can't it's, be. It's, it's probably barely 90. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, as far as it being <laughs> stable, um, you know, I ran, I've been running all of the different builds and I kind of have you know, taking the risk and just use this as the phone all the time, even on all these janky developer previews. So preview one and preview two were surprisingly stable. Preview three was not good at all. I had nothing but issues. There was bugs hmm. all over that. My phone actually froze up uh, at, on one day. I think it was just a random Saturday, but it froze up, wouldn't read my fingerprint. Hmm. And then when I would try to unlock it with my pattern, it would like unlock and swipe in. And then it would immediately go back to the lock screen. There was no way I could get around it. So, and then it crashed and went into a recovery state and said, all your data is corrupt and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it was awful. Oh. DP3 was an awful build. It was so bug filled. So this one seems much more stable. Mm -hmm. So this is a beta and it should be, I would hope so. They're letting everybody flash this thing if they want to. So, I, I mean, I've already run into a number of bugs. Like, you know, when you, uh, uh, when you get a passcode texted to you and in yeah. the notification, there's the quick copy button for that. That mm -hmm. crashes the system. At least oh. it did in a couple of apps of mine. So that like crashed the system and then the whole thing had to kind of refresh itself. So like that's happened. There are some things. Um, I was able to set up Google Pay. So I believe Google Pay works. I know people always ask that. Um, I got it working. Yeah, like I, I was able to set it up. I haven't left the house, so I don't I haven't like paid for anything with my phone. But yeah, it's set up, right? Yeah. So it seems okay. Um it still feels like a beta to me. Like it just feels a little sluggish at times. I don't know. But you know, it mostly works. I think you'd be safe to run it if you if you want to. They make it pretty easy to go back too, don't yeah. they? Don't you just unenroll and then you just Kind of go yeah. back, I think. Just try it. Just try it. If you're really curious, I think it's good enough to at least try. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's sort of kind of it, right? We have a, this is the first beta. <laughs> we could get Sorry. an update, like a beta 1.1 update, and then we'll get a beta 2, and I think a beta 3, and then it should be stable. So we have multiple betas, and they'll probably keep adding stuff, but... Real quick, I just want to go backwards. Um, oh, sometimes sure. it's really funny. Like people will flash a beta, and then they'll complain because the random obscure app from like 2014 won't work or something, and they complain as if like who cares? This does happen, yes. Yeah, it's really funny to me. <clears throat> like their 2012 QR code scanner doesn't work anymore, and they're like, "Why does this not work?" <laughs> it's like, dude, just open your normal camera. You'll be good. S seriously. Actually, uh, random, yeah. random note there. I was at this uh, brew pub like a week or so ago. And, you know, everyone's got the QR code menus on their on their tables now. I could not get the Pixel camera. And then my wife's Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra camera could not scan this one restaurant's QR code. So I actually had to install a, a QR random scanner. QR code scanner. And it worked. It's the only time that's ever happened to hmm. me. But it's like, I don't know what was with these people's uh, QR code. But it was the worst ever. And so uh, 
I take it back if you still have the 2012 QR code scanner app. I don't see it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, like, we've, we've talked about a lot of the new stuff that, that was coming to Android 12 because we've had previews. Um, this beta is supposed to bring about a lot of UI changes and some more of these privacy tools. And again, a lot of them aren't there. We have like a taste of some of them, but not all of it. And there, a lot of it's coming, I think, in beta 2 is my understanding. Um, and then even further down the road, it'll come when it hits stable to Pixel phones. Um, so like, as you kind of mentioned, like who's going to adopt some of these things, like is Samsung's One UI 4 going to take on this new material U or is Samsung going to go their own route? You know, OnePlus is already rolling out like a sort of an early beta build of Android 12 to the 9 and 9 Pro. You can flash it right now, although it sounds like it's kind of a bad idea. It's breaking I some wouldn't. people's phones. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't seen a lot of what it looks like, but I, you know, I don't know if they're going to try to adopt material U. Like what Google pushed out was not only Android 12, but a whole new design language too. And so we don't know who's going to adopt that. Um, <laughs> So lots of stuff coming from 12 to see kind of where the industry goes for the first time in a while, right? Um, either way, I think it it looks good for Google products, assuming their next phones, as you kind of mentioned, can deliver. Like deliver much more than this. Like, look, I like the Pixel 5. I'm it's also fine. not afraid to acknowledge the fact that the Pixel 5 is nowhere near the best phone on the market, right? Like I like it most people probably should buy the Galaxy S21 Ultra. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, it, it just has a few shortcomings. It's by no means a bad phone. Like, I'm, I'm using it, and it's not terrible. It's got still got a great camera and all that, but there's just, like, some shortcomings. That's all. Random note in the chat. I've seen now at least two people say it's backwards hat day. It's it, always are you new? backwards hat day. I was going to say, are you new? Are you you got to be new. <laughs> It's got to be the first DL show you've watched because I think for about six, seven years now since we've been doing show nine years, I don't even know how long we've been doing this. Like, I, I mean, we've been we've had <laughs> hats that have been forward, backward, whatever. A lot of times backward. Though. Yeah. Uh, Max quickly asks, uh, should Google just focus on sub three fit three hundred and fifty dollar pairs? <laughs> No, so I'm laughing just because, like, that's the worst thing they could do, right? But, like, we're trying – I'm talking about they need a premium smartphone to carry this premium user experience they just pushed. No, we we need a little higher up than 350 bucks, man. That's just yeah. – I can't do that. You can keep your A-line. That's fine. But we need a premium Pixel device to compete. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the A line makes sense in Google's lineup of phones. It just kind of didn't make a lot of sense last year when you had A, then A five G, and then five, and there wasn't a lot different between them other than the Pixel five has a ninety hertz display. They're all mid range phones in my yeah. book. Yeah, like. so I would love to see Google, you know, take another stab at the high end and keep the A line as well, because. Again, I like this phone, but, you know, I could use some more. It's like how you just said you went from the S21 Ultra to this, and you're like, yeah, this is not a, that good of a phone. I, that, it would be shocking for anyone to go from S21 Ultra back to this. Since I'm just only ever on this, I'm like, it's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, like a $1,000 Pixel 6 Pro or Ultra, whatever the hell it's called. I don't care. Um, don't the, care. the bigger one, the more expensive one. <laughs> That's... If it was like a thousand bucks with all the specs, like we haven't seen a specked out Google device in so long. I mean, they've been giving us the same camera sensor for five years. It'd be cool. It'd be cool just to like see what they can do. It would be cool to see them just try yeah. again. Just keep just trying, try. Google. Just you got try. enough money. Just keep trying. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's Android 12. Let's uh, let's move on to the really important stuff. The big stuff. Yeah. So uh, we were hoping we would get a big um wear os update google's kind of been talking about it they put a session on the calendar that said hey what's new with wear and they just called it wear not wear os and we went well what's going on there's all these rumors that samsung was going to switch to wear os and so you kind of wonder well if samsung is going to switch to wear os google must be doing something with it because there's no way samsung comes back unless there's big changes there like wear os in its current state is pretty bad so as it turns out all of that actually happened. Google announced 
So where they said Android 12 is the biggest update since 2014 or whatever, with where they said this is like the biggest update ever in the For history wearables. of where. Yeah. yeah. So what they announced was they've been working with Samsung to... Now, this is where we're probably never going to find out for sure. But they said we've been working with Samsung to bring the best of Wear OS and Tizen together as sort of one platform that I guess we're just calling Wear. And and then it's going to run this. And Samsung will probably customize like a skin on top of it because we'll talk about that. But Google's encouraging people to do that. Uh, but they're saying they work together to create a platform together. And they name drop both Wear OS and Tizen, um, and so they're gonna they're gonna bring wearables on Android into you know a modern era. What exactly does that mean? They I don't know that we really know, right? There's a bunch of new apps. They're gonna redo all the apps. Google says for now, Google Play is on Wear OS, and Tizen watches the Galaxy Watch line. Their problem has long been that there are no apps. Right. They've added some, but they've always had this terrible app ecosystem. So this way they come to Wear OS with Google and they have Google Play. And so all the apps there, hopefully Google and Samsung can talk everyone into redoing those and making them nice with Material U and all this stuff. That's kind of sort of the promise. Um, but they talked about they're going to work together to make battery life awesome. They said they've done a bunch of underlying stuff to make performance better. Um, and then there's going to be a bunch of health stuff. And so those are kind of the three areas of focus, I believe. Um, but what we've got is Google and Samsung saying we could not do this alone. Even though Samsung sells a lot of Galaxy watches, they obviously must feel stuck. And you can kind of see it, right? They had the Galaxy Watch Active 2 line. And then when they went to the Galaxy Watch 3, they were the same watch, just with a different case, basically, and an extra price tag. But there wasn't any new technology. The OS didn't change. There weren't a bunch of new apps. So... I'm guessing they felt stuck and Google said, well, our Wear OS sucks, but we need a reason to like make it better. And they asked Samsung and Samsung said, cool, I think maybe that's, that's kind of where we are. They, they're saying they're going to do it, Tim. Well, if they're saying they're going to do it, then um, you better believe it. It's going to be sweet. I think, you know, their partnership uh, between Google and Samsung makes a lot of sense, right? Samsung is offering, you know, um, they seem to have at least the will uh, to want to sell wearable devices, whereas Google, maybe not so much. But like you said, Samsung lacks sort of that app ecosystem. So I think they actually can benefit each other very well, um, you know, with Samsung getting access to Google Play and, and then, you know, Google having sort of, I guess, like maybe a hardware partner or a partner at least that will help develop maybe the OS or put more resources towards it because that's quite the undertaking um, we're talking about a complete revamp of this wearable platform. It's not cheap. So, you know, spreading that cost out along the two companies seems like a good idea. Um, very interested, uh, just interested to like see it in action. They weren't very detailed, I feel like, as in when we would see it. I mean, right, we don't even yeah. technically know the name of this right. unified platform. I, I mean, they kept saying Wear OS, but then you also mentioned that it just said Wear. So, there, yeah. There's some questions that need answering, but I, it's a man, it's better than nothing. It's a fantastic step in the right direction. Uh, Wear OS has been a dead platform, deceased platform. Uh, it's had for a long time, you know, yeah, for quite some time. So, I mean, and poor Fossil, they probably just feel like they've been left out in the cold. I'm sure they'll obviously have access to this, but. I mean, Fossil's the one who's been, like, carrying the torch, them and Mob Boy. And, and Fossil's just, like, going to get Stepchild into a corner here and say, you know, nah, you know what, we're going to work with big boy Samsung. Even though, like, I... Although, like, so they mentioned a unified platform between Tizen and stuff. Like, I, I don't really want anything of Tizen. Like, Tizen could just kind of go away. Although I have little experience with Tizen, so I don't know exactly what's better about Tizen versus Wear OS. I'd let you answer that. Not but much. Yeah, I mean it was slightly I, more yeah. polished, but sure. I just I just assume they're taking Wear OS and they're just finally improving it. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna let Samsung put all of their suite of apps on top of it and skin it. And Samsung's gonna do that. And then they're gonna say they work together. 
And then that's like mostly it. And and their Google's using Samsung's name to help promote Wear OS again is sort of my this is just me guessing here. But I like I don't think uh, they're gonna bring much from Tizen. Like I I think mm. it's mostly just Google finally putting time into Wear OS and improving it, and they needed a partner to make it stand out again. And Samsung is the biggest player in the Android game. That's just yeah. sort of my theory on what's going on there. And Samsung said, sure, we'll do that. You know, like I was just you mentioned how we don't really even know what to call it. I think we're just calling it where. But if you look at Samsung's press release, they don't mention the name anywhere. They say they mention wearables, but the word mm. where is not in Samsung's press release anywhere. They just said we're working with Google. It's so and they mentioned Tizen by name. They don't mention where, where OS. So and then Google kind of does. And when they're talking about them working together, though, I'm just trying to speed read as I'm talking. I don't think they actually mention it by name either, but then they go on and talk about where and, and things like that. So it's, I, I feel like it's Wear OS and Google really is just using Samsung's name to be like, look, it's awesome. And Samsung's like, cool, because we needed, we need your Google play system. And that's totally fine. I mean, so yeah. long as the experience is better, right? Like the experience has been really bad. Um, we have to keep reminding people not to buy Wear OS watches right yeah. now because everyone refuses to jump on board with the new 4100 uh, lineup of processors. And then you have companies that are still saying, ah, oh, the 3100's fine. Like what? What's the big deal? That Garbage. seems weird to me. So it's just a bad platform. It's a bad place to be. Uh, we'll see if this announcement, you know, because there's nothing tangible yet. We'll see if this announcement, you know, actually comes to fruition and we'll see what happens. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So. Well, so let, let's talk about other device makers for a second. You kind of brought them up, but Google. So Google has these partners, mostly Fossil um, and then Mobvoi. Those are kind of the two. Right. And, you know, they didn't talk about any of them. But what they kind of mentioned was, is we hope all of these partners take the platform and kind of customize it to their own liking, which Wear OS forever and when it was Android Wear, the, the idea was Google didn't really want people to customize it. They said, look, we just kind of want to have a standard Android Wear, Wear OS experience, put it on your watch and you could differentiate through, you know, maybe some hardware features and design, but we kind of want to keep the, the operating system about the same everywhere. That obviously failed. Um, they're now kind of saying with the new wear, customize it however you want. So that means Samsung is for sure. And there was a rumor right before IO that Samsung was going to put one UI on it, right? So Google is essentially, I think, confirming that that's what's going to happen. When they when Samsung releases these Wear OS watches, they're they're gonna they're gonna have one UI on them, and you know it, you'll still probably know it's Wear OS and how a lot of the things function, but it's gonna look like a Samsung operating system or skin and so they're asking like fossil like fossil's not a software company right so mm. like fossil uses wear os right now and they've they have a team obviously that puts out updates and whatever and they've added some software apps and things like that to improve the experience but it's almost like google's now asking these companies who again are not software companies to create custom skins for other watches i'm worried they're gonna run everyone off and then we'll be left with probably companies like Samsung and maybe companies like Motorola because they're just in that game. Like they'll take another stab at it, but you're probably going to lose maybe your your partner in Fossil is, is something I would worry about. Um, on, on sort of a related note, Fitbit announced, and again, Google owns or essentially owns Fitbit. Fitbit announced that they are a big part of this new Wear platform too. They're going to bring all of their services over, or at least a bunch of core services over just to Wear to make it so you can track all of your health and fitness stuff on Wear devices. And then they're also going to release premium hardware watches of their own running Wear. So Fitbit's platform, it sounds like, is basically dead, and they're now coming over to Wear. I know that's probably going to make a lot of people pissed off, but that's that's essentially what they've announced. I think that's good because I've always thought Fitbit smartwatches were absolute trash, but I know a lot of people do like them. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's this, it, 
it's such a big announcement because it's Google saying, where's here? We work with Samsung, unified platform, but also it's so important and big that we want our other players to come hang out again and customize it to their liking. And Fitbit says, we're going to do it and we're going to bring our services. So there's a lot going on here. But like you said, we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know like what it, what Samsung's going to make it look like. We don't know if the hardware will be good, the experience will be good, the update situation. But I guess it's kind of like Android phones is where we're at, right? Google ships Android, phone makers take it, customize it, ship it out however they like. It's, it's almost like Wear OS is finally going where Android phones went long ago, and maybe that's where they should have gone from the beginning. Yeah, so if you like that fragmentation sort of approach, I think it's totally acceptable. We love fragmentation. <laughs> yeah, I got fragmentation tattooed across my chest. That's how much God. I like it. Mine's on the lower back. <clears throat> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. a little tramp stamp? Fragmentation <laughs> tramp stamp. Congratulations. Perfect spot for it, yep. And real quick, before we dive any deeper, I wanted to talk a couple of donations we had in Charles W., a.k.a. PC747, I believe. Yeah, that was uh, pre-show. Yeah, $20 donation. Said, I'm going to miss the show, but definitely will check it out in post. Been waiting to hear the DL take on IO20 uh, 2021. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, we, uh, well, I mean, like, we haven't even talked about how lame the actual IO was. Like, maybe we can here in a minute. Um, and then we've got Big Bomb Dono Don dropped in a $25. Hope that Chawini's doing well, Don. Thank you so very much. Good to see you, Don. Um, Chawini master. Yeah, so real quickly, though, it was a IO yesterday. It was a total cringe fest. It was brutal. Not only that, but then I realized, you know, while all of it's happening... And yes, I'm realizing as it's going that it's so completely boring. Like what they're talking about. Everything before Android 12 and Wear OS could have just been a press release. Like all yeah. the stuff for Google Photos, Google Maps, all the AI stuff. Like that's a press release. Uh, that It was really kind of boring. Uh, not really great. Like it just wasn't very flashy. Uh, but then the blobs. Uh, the blobs were happening and like... And I'm all for indie rock and music and stuff, like, but machine learning blobs, opera, it was really rough. And like I liked the little disco kind of melody thing that there at the end because I knew that song, but the music before that, it was pretty rough. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan. I just thought the whole thing was pretty darn cringy. So I don't know what you thought about Google I.O., but in general, it was so boring. There was only 40,000 people watching it. Like, that's embarrassing. We're talking like a huge Google announcement. 40,000 people? That's yeah. rough. That's rough. I mean, it's not a, it wasn't a product announcement thing, so I kind of get it. I um, and it is it is a developer conference. Remember, we always have to remember that. It's a developer conference. Remember when we all used to get mad when they cut off all the free goodies that we got and stuff like that? And Google's like, and they basically cut every all the free goodies off because they, they all these people kept signing up that weren't developers because they just wanted free shit. Sure, but at the same time, we have to realize that entire thing was an announcement that was for the public. Those were all products, part of Google Photos and Maps and, and Android. Tablet. Like These are things that people can buy or at least kind of buy into an ecosystem. So the fact that to, to say, oh, it's just a developer thing, like, no, if day two has 40,000 viewers like live stream, that makes sense. That day one where the new Android version is getting announced, that huge Wear OS announcement is getting made, that feels like that should be like 100K viewers happening right i mean like i don't know i was not impressed 300k yeah I, 300k maybe, is apple numbers i don't expect that and i'm just saying like it's google it's google, the biggest um, you know, second biggest company in the world yeah i mean as far as presentation stuff goes look it's still a virtual event so i i don't really expect a lot i think they really did try to do it live so props to them for pulling that off sure. um the blobs thing at the start, like I don't get the blobs. I, I don't even. I'm not. Even, I don't even know what the blobs are. I just know there was you a musical performance <laughs> at the beginning with blobs, and it was so bad. I had to mute the thing because I tried to to listen. I was like, oh, let's, let's see what these guys are going. And then there was just blobs <laughs> screaming for like I, I muted it um, until it started. So, uh, but yeah, it, 
you know, as, as far as like me reviewing Google IO, the show, it, it definitely got started slow. I, yeah, mm. it, it got started a little slow. We, we did the AI song and dance like we always do. And then we did some like Pena showed up and oh, did a yeah. skit that was bad. Like the, the first, I mean, it was probably our was, it was pretty, it was pretty dry. Um, uh, again, developer conference, so uh, maybe that's just what they were they were they were working on. Yes, machine learning, uh, lots of machine learning talk. Uh, but they, you know, once once Matthias came out and they got Android twelve going, things picked up and it was interesting enough. But yeah, I mean, I don't. it was fine. I just saw a lot of roasting going on, and like I just feel like it needs to be more exciting where we aren't sitting there like roasting Google for how boring or how weird something is. I don't know. It wouldn't be the current world, though, if we all weren't just sitting on Twitter roasting. Sure. Everything. And they've got, I'm like, silly serious. names for all their stuff. And, like, uh, Lambda. And there was, like, some other stuff. I was like, these names are just, like, kind of dumb, but whatever. Damn. Like, talking This is, to, like, who Google's always been, though. <laughs> I know. It's just so weird. Maybe I'm just too old for that stuff I now. you're just um, old and cranky. You're, like, turning into me. Don't do that. Sure. I'm the old well, cranky one that complains about everything. Yeah, talking to... I think I lost to where we could start talking to paper airplanes, as uh, Ben yes, reminded me, me. Like, I... I get like talking to a planet seems kind of cool, like in that kind of conversation form. But why do I want to talk to a paper airplane? I just, maybe there maybe, was a better maybe example. Maybe a child does. Us. Yeah. Maybe a child yeah. wants to have a fun conversation with a puppy or something. You know? Oh, absolutely. That'd be cool. But yeah, I don't. Not a paper I mean, airplane. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I've been to a several in-person Google IOs and. A lot of them are pretty boring in person too. So I don't like, I don't think this is the only Google IO that's been boring. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I think everyone was just at home bored staring at Twitter as everything unfolded. So it seemed probably worse or different, but I mean, there was plenty in person IOs and those things. Remember those in person ones were three hour keynotes, I think. And and some of those were tough because the last hour was always like, something related to Chrome OS or something. <laughs> not, yeah. not that Chrome OS is awful, but they, they used to go into something. So I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just not, I don't have energy for IO review pundit talk. Zero products too. I think I know you yeah, might've no at least been expecting pixel buds a I or whatever, mm-hmm. but nothing, no products, man. Yeah, no, yeah, no hardware at all. Um, not unusual, but you know, like a week ago, the Android Twitter account slipped up and posted Google Pixel Buds A now available. And everyone went, wait a minute. And so I just assumed, OK, they were a week early or whatever, the two weeks early. And then now they would uh, have announced it. It seemed like a good time to throw the uh, spotlight on your new affordable buds. But they they did not. They did not do that. Um, they've well, already they announced, only had you know, 40,000 people watching anyway. So no one <laughs> would have bought. This <laughs> is this is true. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, back to the wearable stuff for just a second. Samsung did announce that they will support their ties and watches for three years, by the way. So if you own a Galaxy watch and you're wondering, hey, what about me? Um, they did say that we will support ties and watches for three years from the date they were released, I believe is the specific wording there. So if you have like a Galaxy Watch Active 2, you're about done getting support anyway. If you have a Galaxy Watch 3, you probably got about two more years of support. And I think some people are wondering if their Galaxy Watch 3 is going to get updated to where. Yeah, I mm. think the chances of that happening are pretty close to 0%. Um, I, I, I don't know that we often see hardware devices launch with one software and completely switch to another. That doesn't happen very often. So I, I don't think you should expect that your Galaxy Watch 3 will magically change to whatever this new platform. I'd assume the Galaxy Watch 4 watches are going to kick that off and they're going to go forward from there. Meanwhile, they'll just sl- sort of support ties and watches. Sorry. That sucks. Ooh. I feel bad too because like the Galaxy Watch 3 has started at 400 bucks or something. It was not cheap and they basically just said, yeah, we're done with this platform. Kind of sad. Hmm. Greg says, excited to have something to choose from other than Fossil. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Like Samsung makes 
quality hardware. And so the fact that they're coming back to where and you'll have Google Play apps and stuff and Google seems to care. It's it's very big news if you're into smartwatches and all of that and you just weren't a fan of Samsung's ties in. Okay, so here's the thing though. You know when you use any Samsung product, it installs 16 plugins <laughs> in order to work properly? Oh yeah. I wonder if that's still going to happen. I really I really hope not, but mm-hmm. I have bad feeling there. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right. So some other topics from IO Google photos, the locked folder. Apparently everyone's really excited about Google photos getting a locked folder. I needed that. (laughs) Yeah. So if, uh, if you don't know what that is, Google photos will soon have a folder that's called the locked folder. And I think it's coming to pixel first, right? So, um, the locked folder is, well, sort of as it sounds, you have pictures in Google photos. You don't want anyone to see them. You throw them in the locked folder and then they're, you know, locked behind your password or your pin or your fingerprint. And then they won't show up in your timeline. No one can access that unless they, you know, have your finger or you know your password, that sort of thing. So Google Photos soon have a uh, a, uh, a locked thing, which is fun. Um, they announced some other stuff, though. What were, it's like has to do with like motion, oh, cinematic moments, right? Yes, uh, cinematic memories, I think they're actually called. It's sort of an evolution of something they released last year where it can take two nearly identical photos and then using neural networks can kind of work in the movements that would take place between those two photos and make it look as if it's sort of a living photo, essentially, and not just some, like, you know, cheap GIF. So it actually looks really cool. It'll work on anything taken from like a newer smartphone. It's also um, old photos that are imported from old albums or something you have. So it could like make an old photo kind of come to life so long as you have two of them and that are nearly identical. It could be totally sweet. Mm -hmm. So, Um, And then they also announced, what was it? New ways to just like remove photos from memories and highlights, things like that. Um... What else? I thought there was something else. Uh, there is something else. Why can't I remember though? Um, I remember. Nah, there was two things with the memories. You could remove memories I think more that's easily. It. Yeah, that's. Uh, but then I, I thought for sure there was something else, but maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I just so care more about having soon-ish. the locked folder. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, locked folder is nice. Yeah. Um, let's see. In terms of like privacy stuff, they announced that uh, you will soon be able to go easily delete recent history. So like, let's say you go on Google search, a topic comes to mind, you want to look it up real quick, and then you don't want to see 17,000 ads on Instagram about that topic going forward. You'll be able to go in, tap on your profile photo, and there'll be this little option in Google search that says delete last 15 minutes. I can't tell you how often I'm probably going to use the delete last 15 minutes thing. So anyway, that's coming. Um, let's see the password manager in Chrome. If you have, you know, an exposed password or something, they're going to finally notify you almost in real time and let you change those things right away. So that'll be super handy. Um, what did they announce for digital car keys? I'm assuming, cause I wasn't paying attention, but I'm assuming this is like one car said we'll support Android 12's digital car keys. Uh, for now, yeah, basically, yeah, probably car, cars from BMW and then like some Perfect. other makers, but nothing confirmed. But for now, BMW. Okay. So, the, and that's just part of Android 12, right? That's not rolling backwards? Correct. Or is that just, okay. Yeah, just Android 12. I think it said um, uh, select Pixel and Galaxy devices. So expect the new Pixel and Galaxy devices to like highlight digital digital car keys for your yeah, BMW they're using- device. Yeah, they're using UWB, right? And UWB Correct. is not in any current Pixel phone, so that's probably a hint at future Pixel phones, I'd imagine. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got digital car keys. Awesome. Um, oh, there's a new Android TV remote coming. They announced that as well. Is that just built in, or is that an actual like remote app? Remember, there used to be an Android TV remote app you installed. Yeah, and it apparently became totally trash not too long bad. ago. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it has been a while, but yeah, you know, being able to have an Android TV remote that's also compatible with Google TV um, built into the device is uh, very helpful. Nvidia has been doing the same thing since at least 2018 when they gave us the new Shield TV. They had an updated app which lets you 
control what's going on and also has the keyboard functionality built in because I don't know about y'all, but when you're trying to enter in a password or something using just the up and down, left, right arrow direction, it's the worst experience in the world. So, yeah, thank goodness. Thank you, Google. Finally, 2021. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, a bunch of Google Maps stuff. What did they announce for Google Maps? This is another one of those things that you were all over that I did not even have a chance to like look at. Mm. I know they what announced like some Google Maps. I know they announced like some uh, new like fancy live view stuff, which they keep really, really pushing. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So they talked about there's going to be a new sort of parameter for when they're about to give you a route, a route. And it's they're going to look for hard breaking events, like if a certain uh, road or something has a lot of events that lead to people having a break hard. They're going to try and uh, not let you go down those roads because those types of events lead to accidents. Gotcha. Uh, they're t- yeah, they're also talking about um, improved live view, uh, more easily uh, easy to access, and also when you're inside of live view, you can like hover over a business and s- instantly see business hours or other details. You can tap on better street signs on the street and stuff so you know where you're going and uh that's about it i mean at least in terms of spending time on the podcast that that that's about it um the one other thing which we didn't actually write up there's there's an android tv feature that's coming that where they're changing it so or they're adding it so that if you're watching media on one device you can say to the assistant like move this over so like if you're watching a show or a movie in your living room and you want to go watch it in your bedroom, you can say, like, move this to the bedroom. That's coming at some point in time, too. They talked about how there's, like, 80 million Android TV devices or something like that now, which seems like a lot. I, Android TV felt like it was almost a dead platform not that long ago, and now it's everywhere. I mean, at one point, it was seemed like it was mostly just NVIDIA keeping it alive with Shield, and now it's on a number of TVs. There's the Google TV Chromecast thing from Google. They're actually improving it. The Android 12 beta is on um, the ADT3 developer device because so they're obviously improving it there. So Google's got all the platforms just kind of rolling right now. Uh, Android TV big, Wear OS back, Android obviously. What did what did they announce it with um, number of Android devices? Three billion. Oh, sorry. Did I say 80 billion on Android TV? I'm 80 million. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I said billion. 80 million. And the devices of Android <laughs> are 3 billion. There we go. That's impressive. That's 80 billion. Yeah. 80 billion Android TV and only 3 billion phones. That's not correct at all. So, um, yeah. They, I mean, they announced a bunch of stuff. This is kind of all the stuff that we've covered. Um, there are some like little itty bitty changes and tweaks to stuff here and there. Like, Google's testing apparently something where like if you install an app, it'll show on your home screen with like an installing thing, just like iOS does. Like I do not care about so like who cares? (laughs) Such silly little things. Um, So, you know, stuff like that. Um, There's, you know, there's there's mentions of the Pixel 6 in Android 12 beta um, in the Pixel 5a and maybe Pixel foldable. Like those things are still hovering around. That'd be Um, sweet. Yeah, but as far as I.O. goes, that's kind of most of the big stuff. It was oh, yeah. uh, it was a it was a good day one I.O. as far as news goes. Oh, they're actually making a YouTube music app for Wear OS now. You know, they've never had one, even though they killed Google Play Music. They're actually making one for Wear OS now. So that's big. I guess that's kind of it, really. I mean, Android related stuff. I mean, that, yeah, but that's like not bad. Like mm. Android 12 is looking dope. No. Where, where, where platform looking dope. It's a good time to be an Android guy. Although, I mean, it sucks. Like I'll be jumping to the iPhone 13 anyway. So like, this is all for nothing, but <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, unless the pixel six is awesome. It might be. Chances the Pixel 6 is awesome. Um, you know, there's there's rumors that Google's making a watch finally, like a Pixel watch. Sure. Seeing this announcement with Samsung, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Just a prediction. And I, and I don't have any sort of actual information related to that. I know there's that's rumored that they're making a Pixel watch. Uh, my 
my doubts are raised now because they announced this partnership with Samsung. I mean, Google could surprise us, but Google often when they announce like partnerships with people, then they often seem like they don't want to step on anyone's toes and then they hide and don't release hardware. But I guess now would be a good time. A little pixel experience on a watch, you know, since we're customizing yeah. experience. And I guess now would be also a good time. I just have my doubts a little bit just because they made such a big deal about partnering with Samsung. That's all. Mm. Yeah. What, what percent is pixel six going to be awesome? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, don't I mean, the feel for, I don't have a good feel for that. Yeah, we didn't really talk about the renders at all that we saw. Those third party, non official, not Google sanctioned yeah. renders. Yeah. I mean, those renders at least got me a little excited because it was something different. All right. So I don't yeah, expect there are it to renders. be as, I don't expect it to be as wild, I feel like, as what we saw in the renders, but something similar, maybe. You never know. Yeah. I guess I sort of have my doubts on the renders too, but yeah, I hope, you know, I kind of hope that the renders are legit because they're weird as hell. And it would be Google, it would be Google kind of just going wild, which I'm totally fine with. I hope they do something crazy. So, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. It's weird to not like have trivia to transition to. Sorry. I mean, don't worry. We'll make it up to you guys. We'll have trivia. Plus, I don't even have freaking lights. I moved and like, so I didn't, I haven't reinstalled those lights. So I, I wouldn't be able to like do. That's true. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same like vibe. Yeah. No, it really wouldn't. So I'll yeah, figure but Do you really out. want to put those back up? Like, uh, I want to put something up. <laughs> like, I want something that'll freak out. Maybe these lights behind me, I could, um, Put some LED, like you know, R- RGB stuff in there, and have them go crazy. Have them go crazy. Yeah, something. Have them go crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Those uh, dang Philips Hue lights are just so expensive, it's stupid, yeah, and not worth it. I mean, I have a bunch in my house, but yeah, I wouldn't. It's like I'm already yeah, in the but, ecosystem, so you're just kind of stuck. The guy like, who's got them all, yeah. Well, yeah, totally. but it's one of those things like you invest early on. And then you just kind of go, well, I can't switch light platforms now because then I have another, I have to like get two apps to manage or whatever, right? Sure. Uh, Cold CC was saying maybe we could get a post on podcast setups. Nah, it's (laughs) pretty simple. Like I've got two lights here and that's it. A camera right there, a a mic. That's it, man. There's no setup. (laughs) There's no setup. Yeah, the mic goes I mean, into a scarlet interface. Like, don't get me wrong, our setup looks pretty sharp, but oh, yeah, of course, it's because we're using we're good, old Sony but... cameras. We're not using webcams. If you ever wonder why that our helps. cameras look so good, it's because they're real cameras. They're not. They're not yeah. webcams. This ain't a webcam podcast. No. <laughs> Actually, we kind of want to redo the it whole thing. Be. All this stuff up here. All this. We might redo this soon this year. Oh, it yeah? might be like a project. I don't know. It's been we've had the same look for a while. I might need something new. Freshen it up a bit. Yeah, something. I like that. If you could actually create like a a slide or something that maybe like is sort of translucent but does like a rainbow colored effect for the trivia, and I wouldn't that have would to install awesome. any lights, that would that be super true. helpful. <laughs> that that might actually be the real solution. Then you don't have to deal with these awful lights anymore. Yeah, that'd be cool. Anyways, well, I don't have anything else, so. Uh, that's, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I know it's been a while. Well, definitely, um, I was moving, so now I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I've made it. So hopefully the show's going to be back on track. And uh, yeah. See, there's nothing else coming on now that IO's done. Yeah. So I have well, no idea devices, what we're going to talk about now. That's true. Devices. We've got Sam. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Sony coming up. We've got Pixel stuff coming up. Coming up, I say coming up very loosely. But, yeah, we're talking uh, like August. It's May. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> there's stuff coming. So, you might see so us do a away. show sometime in July, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm just like, once, oh, the hell, we're gonna talk about in like two weeks from now. Well, you know, uh, maybe the industry will surprise me. You, know, you never maybe know. We'll. We're gonna stay positive over here. We'll try. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I hope everyone has a safe, fabulous weekend. Actually, we still have Thursday and Friday to go. I hope you have That's a true. safe, fabulous rest <laughs> of your week. I'm so used to doing this on Fridays that today actually feels weird. I'm like, yeah, I'm just about to uh, dip for the weekend. Um, 
So anyway, be safe out there. It's good to see everyone. We'll uh, we'll try to get back to some some more regular shows, assuming the uh, the world of Android news can uh, give us something fun. So uh, good to see you all. We are Droid Life. Peace. Peace.